Hi there, and welcome to this webinar. And in this webinar, we'll be touching upon five game changers that will help you reach your goals and desires, but also eliminate everything that has been standing in your way so that the road to true happiness is clear. And for that, you need a vision, a vision of where you want to go and how you want to get there. Because without it, you're missing a sense of direction and you might just go round and round in circles or end up somewhere where you don't really want to be. And the result of that would be is that you will be frustrated, you might be angry, or it might even lead to aggression. Having a vision is one thing, but it's equally important to understand what has been standing in your way and why. Maybe you've seen your dreams right in front of you already and had a bit of a taste of it, but for some reason they haven't really materialized just yet. Understanding the forces at play that are holding you back is key, especially because many of these forces operate on a subconscious level, and so you're not even aware that they are part of you, yet they are holding you back. You see, everything that has been standing in your way is mental. It's simply a construct of the conscious and the subconscious mind. And the good thing about it is, though, that if we build it up, we can also tear it down and change it according to our needs so that it's in line with our goals and desires and we can easily learn to obtain them. Now, we may blame the circumstances in our lives for our suffering or for our failures, but it's not so much the circumstances but it's the way or the degree to which we allow them to stand in our way or let them influence our lives. You see, if our desire is strong enough, there is always, always a way. So taking these five game changers that I will be sharing with you in this webinar, because they will give you the tools to reach your goals and desires, and will put you firmly in the driver's seat of the game called life. So what are these five game changers? Well, let me briefly touch upon each and one of them right here and then dive deeper into them as this webinar goes along. Game changer number one, what makes you tick? What is it that truly drives you at a deeper level of being? And what is it that you really desire? And why do you desire it? And what need will get fulfilled if you reach that desire? What pain or anticipated pain will you suffer and endure if you don't reach that desire or if you don't reach that goal? You see, pain or anticipated pain is a great motivator because all human behavior is directed in only two ways. It's either towards pleasure or away from pain. Game changer number two, empowering beliefs. We are very programmed beings and our belief system is a program that runs our behavior. Yet, a belief is not an absolute truth, and it's simply a construct of the mind, and can be false or outdated, not true, or imposed on us by others. And a belief can either be empowering, or it can be limiting. And a limiting belief is holding us back from reaching our goals and desires. And many of these limiting beliefs are hardwired into our subconscious mind. And many of them also stem from early childhood. So learning to identify them, know where they came from, and then replacing them with empowering beliefs is a true game changer and a really necessary step in the process of transformation and growth. Game changer number three, free will. Free will is a universal law that we 100% control, and it consists of three parts. Number one is what we focus on. Number two is the meaning that we give to things or events happening in our lives. And number three is the actions that we take or the choices that we make because that's the action of making a choice. And free will is extremely important how we go through life. It determines, if we understand it well, it determines how we experience life. Do we go through life in a happy way or do we go through life suffering? And further along in this webinar, I will explain why free will has an influence on exactly that. Game changer number four, mastering fear. Fear keeps us stuck in life. And fear wants to keep us safe, which is a good thing, but it's also keeping us in our comfort zone. And if you really want to grow and transform, we need to get out of our comfort zone because that's where change happens. We cannot expect to do the same thing over and over again 
and expect things to change. It just doesn't work that way. So we need to get out of our comfort zone and go through our fear to get out of our comfort zone. Now understanding what fear is in play, what it's trying to tell us and why it is keeping, trying to keep us safe is key in order to grow and transform. Game changer number five, manifesting your reality and the law of attraction. Now once that we have cleared all the roadblocks in our lives, how do we truly manifest that what we desire into our reality? Now this game changer brings it all together and explains how the law of attraction really works also from a scientific point of view and how you can make use of it in order to manifest all the things that you desire into your reality. It is a very powerful tool if you understand how this works. And so these five game changers will put you on a path of finding that deep burning desire deep inside of you and it will eliminate all the roadblocks or everything that has been standing in your way on a mental or subconscious level. So understanding these five game changers and applying them in your daily life will make you transform and materialize and manifest the things that you so want. So if this sounds good to you, then I advise you to stick around and take in the wisdom from these five game changers and see how they can help you transform and reach your goals in your life. And at the end of the webinar, I will be giving away two bonuses. So if you're interested in that, I advise you to stick around as well. And so before we fully dive in, let me introduce myself. I am Michel Alexiev, and I'm an entrepreneur, an LP trainer, and purpose coach. Life has put quite a few roadblocks on my path, on my road, and I learn how to eliminate them or how to navigate around them and take things into my own control, take control over my own life. Things took a radical change when I was 22 years old. I was in the south of Spain and I got hit by a very, very drunk driver. I remember getting out of the car and closing the door and then squeaking wheels and a bang and then I look back and his car comes at high speed straight at me. I jump out, or jump out of the way over the hood and then boom. And then it was suddenly quiet. I was somewhere in a beautiful space, very warm, very welcoming, felt great. It felt like coming home to mama, so safe, so loving, serene, but yet so very powerful and strong at the same time and full of depth and wisdom. I remember wondering, where am I? I was like floating in space and it was just air and one with everything. I was floating there for I don't know how long because there was no sense of time. I remember thinking how good I felt here, I felt so one with everything. And this experience was so profound and overwhelming and felt so powerful and familiar and full of wisdom that I really felt like coming home and being at home. And then I looked down and I suddenly saw myself lying on the floor. There were people all around me and there was panic, but the, the sound was really dimmed. And I was wondering, hey, that's me, but I'm here. So who am I if, if I'm here and I'm lying there unconsciously on the floor? I couldn't really understand it, but I was me. I was very much me. So I was a little bit confused how that was possible that I was in this beautiful space and yet I saw myself or my body lying on the floor. And then suddenly something said into my ear that you need to go back, Michelle. You still have a life to live. And before I knew it, I was back in my body as if I had put on a glove. And they took me off to the, to the hospital and the ambulance was there and, you know, took me to the operation room. And the next thing I know was I woke up in the ICU and had a long operation and they managed to, to, you know, get me out of life danger, but I was badly hit. And they tried saving my leg because my left leg was mainly badly hit and uh, they couldn't hold on. After a couple of operations, I had 10 operations in a very short period, but in the end they had to take it off. And that was quite a you know, hard pill to swallow, but, uh, but it also gave me a lot of strength because I felt a lot of connection in that space or from that space where I had been. It had given me so much strength, so much calmness, so much faith that everything would be okay. It felt tremendous and it pulled me like a, an invisible hand through my entire recovery and the years after that, until now actually. 
and my accident and my near-death experience gave me a few very valuable life lessons, a few that I just briefly want to share here with you. It learned me all about acceptance, accepting myself, the situation that I was in, and myself as I was for who I am, you know, just accepting myself. And with acceptance, I learned comes great liberation because it opens the door to self-love, because you learn to lo love yourself more because you've accepted everything about yourself and you can love others more easily because you love yourself already and you're less susceptible to the judgment of others. I learned about forgiveness. I forgave the guy who took my leg, the very, very drunk guy who took my leg fairly quickly already when I was, well, still when I was still in the hospital. I learned about forgiveness because I knew, I understood that forgiveness is the biggest gift that you can give yourself. I learned that we are resilient beings, that we have a tremendous inner strength and that we are capable to handle any major blow that life throws at us. We have that power within us and if we connect with that, that we can handle everything and come out on top. I have learned that we are so much more than just our thoughts and emotions and that we have a soul, that we have an inner being that is so powerful, that is strong, that has a lot of wisdom and that has, you know, brings along a lot of calmness and serenity and that's all inside of us. I don't just believe that anymore, I know it to be true because I experienced it. What I experienced out there is inside of us, so, and it's inside of all of us. And lastly, I learned to listen to my inner voice, to that voice that never lies to me. And I learned not to listen so much to other people or what other people are telling me what I cannot do. I've been told so many things that I could not do after my accident anymore, but I refuse to believe these other people, but I, I just trusted what I believe myself. And I pushed myself with a vision and with a desire, I pushed myself way out of my boundaries. And I started doing all kinds of sports that I was told I could not do. I started to play tennis. I played squash. I started skiing on one leg, later on on two legs. And started running and done all kinds of sports that people told me I could not do. But I did them. And I know that I listen to my inner voice. And that always tells you the truth. And so maybe you too have been told certain things that you cannot do, don't believe others. Don't let them project their limiting thinking upon you. Always trust on that inner voice that you have deep inside of you. It is there, it is you, and it comes from your deeper essence. Have trust and faith in that. And so all that I have learned has made me come to develop these five game changers that you know, help me, but can also help you tremendously. So. Without further ado, let's really dive in. Enough about me, and let's see what these game changers are exactly and what they can do for you. Game changer number one, what makes you tick? What is that deeper inner desire that burns inside of you? We all have it, you know, and maybe it feels more like a pilot flame at this very moment, but it has the ability to ignite at any time. So if you're not sure what that desire is, then write down these four questions and try to answer them. What is it what you truly want? And why do you really want it? What happens or what need gets fulfilled if you reach that goal or desire? And lastly, what pain or misery will you feel when you will not reach that goal or that desire? And chunk that down a couple of times. Ask that question on a deeper and deeper level and you will come to the essence what drives you. You see, it's not so much the big house or the nice car. It is something much more at a fundamental level that really drives you and where your desire, your deep desires reside. And that car and that house is just an expression of that deeper desire. And we want to know what that deeper desire is for you because that's your true driver. That is what makes you tick. And once you know what you desire, you can start creating a vision of your future, creating a purpose. Because desire, I call the fuel that ignites you forward. Your purpose is your GPS or your destination. And you need a vehicle to get there. And that are your talents. And they all work together in perfect harmony. You see, all successful people have exactly these three things. They have a very strong burning desire inside of them. They know their own talents very well and use them optimally and use the talents of others for things they're not so good at. 
and they all have a purpose. So what is that that you are dreaming of? Do you have that clear already for yourself? And if not, then I may be able to help you. You know, at the end of this webinar or towards the end of this webinar, you can book a 45 minute free call with me and we can have a chat and see where I can help you find your purpose and your desire and your talents maybe so that you can live a fulfilled life. Game changer number two, empowering beliefs. Empowering beliefs and limiting beliefs are all related to the power of the mind. Our mind is a very powerful tool and to learn to understand it, how it really functions, will truly help you in reaching your goals and desires. Beliefs are an invisible driver of our behavior. I say invisible because they mostly operate on a subconscious level, so we are not really conscious that they are there. Yet, they do have a big influence over our lives. A belief is like a computer program, and so the belief is the software where the mind is the hardware or your hard drive. All that we consciously perceive accounts for only 5%. The other 95% is accounted for by the subconscious mind. So understanding how the subconscious mind works and how you program the subconscious mind or how you change the program is vital in order to grow or change your life situation and reach your goals and desires. Many of our beliefs come from the age of zero to seven. You see, as children, this is the way we learn. We copy and learn the rules of our parents, of our peers, or what we see in our environment. The first seven years of our lives, our brain waves are in theta levels, which is a state similar to a dream state or hypnosis. Now adults, in comparison, in a fully awakened state, they vibrate at a beta level, a much higher frequency level. So children from zero to seven, they actually are going through life in, as if they are dreaming in hypnosis. Now why is this important? Well, if you are in these theta level, if your brain vibrates at that level, then you are in direct contact with your subconscious mind. And anything that you see or that you want to put onto your subconscious mind, you can program it directly onto it when you are in these theta levels. That's why it's so important because children, everything that they take in, they program onto their subconscious mind. And so this is the way how children learn about the rules in our society without having to use any words or understanding words. But let's be honest, not all of these programs or what they see is really beneficial to us. How often are parents not fighting, or there's a struggle with money, or there's mental or physical abuse, or we're being told that we're not good enough. And all these things are directly imprinted onto our subconscious mind, and they function there as a program. A program we didn't really choose ourselves consciously, yet it is there, and it's been there for a very long time, and it is running like a corrupted file. And so, since we don't remember much until the age of four or five, some of these programs may be sitting there very, very long time already and very undetected. We're not even aware that they are part of us, yet they're holding us back in our growth and in our lives. You see, you may have picked up a belief in that period that you're not good enough. And that belief may be holding you back or may have been holding you back in every time that you were almost there or ready for a breakthrough but just didn't make it. It might have been just that belief holding you back. You see, your subconscious mind wants to protect you. And if it has a belief that you're not good enough, it's going to try and hold you back to do certain things where you can fail, where it believes that it, you can fail because it's convinced that you are not good enough. And that's how powerful this is. It's trying to protect you. And it's not the fault of the subconscious mind because it doesn't know any better. You see, it doesn't distinguish between right or wrong or true or false, it just takes over anything that is programmed directly onto it and then it just executes accordingly. So if the program is corrupted or if you have a program I'm not good enough and you're not even aware of it, then it's probably keeping you from reaching your goals and every time that you're close it starts to sabotage you or starts to do some strange behavior that it doesn't fall through. Now we don't only create beliefs from an early age but we also do that at a later age and we do that from experiences, from the influence of others, from opinions and from attitudes that we have. And we imprint that through repetition 
onto our subconscious mind. Repetition of thoughts, of the words that we're saying, or if there's a strong emotional load connected to an experience. The stronger we have an emotional load with an experience, the deeper it is rooted into our subconscious mind. That is also why traumatic events are so deeply rooted in our subconscious mind because of the strong emotional load that they carry. So what you think of, what you feel, and the words you're using most of the time is pretty important because through repetition is how we program the subconscious mind. And if you do something often enough, it becomes a habit. And a habit means that you don't have to consciously think about it anymore in order to perform a certain task. By constantly having a negative thought, emotion, or constantly saying negative words to yourself, you're imprinting your subconscious mind and it starts running as a program and it starts to be part of the 95% that is running most of the show. So you see, beliefs are very powerful and it's important to understand where they came from, when did they arise and are they actually yours or are they even true? You see, once we have identified them and then we can see what they are and we can replace them with empowering beliefs. Because it works both ways, you know, limiting beliefs can be very limiting, but empowering beliefs can be very empowering. Let's have a look at a placebo effect, for instance. A placebo is, you know, a sugar pill. People are given a sugar pill in a, in a test environment and they're told that this is the true medicine and that it's going to cure them. Now, many people, and ranging from a couple of percent to sometimes even 50 percent, simply cure because of the mere belief that they have received the cure for their illness and they cure and it's just the belief that does it there is it's a sugar pill so you know <laughs> they didn't get anything substantial yet the belief cures them it's that powerful and we have limiting beliefs about all areas in our lives about our capabilities about our health or about our fitness level about being able to love or our capacity to be loved all various things that we have limiting beliefs about. And what about money? Money, there are a lot of limiting beliefs about money. Has money been flowing freely your way or have you been able to hold on to it? Because if not, then maybe there's a limiting belief at the core why money has not been flowing freely to you. You see, money is like an energy. It needs to flow and it just, if, if it doesn't come freely to you, then Probably something is not right, you have, don't have the right vibes with money or on a s very deep subconscious level you think the rich are all bastards or something like that and just that subtle little thing may give you adversity to money and not let it flow freely towards you. So a lot of people are struggling with money, so a lot of people probably have a limiting belief that is related to money. So it's important to stop and think for a moment what relationship you truly have with money and what your beliefs are about money. Because if your wish is to receive more money in your life and it hasn't happened yet, then probably a limiting belief is the root of your problem. And beliefs also influence your health. Research has shown that your emotional state and your beliefs have an influence on your cells and on the way that your genes express themselves. It's a field called epigenetics. And so it also has an influence on your entire being, on your body and all your cells in your body. So it's that powerful as well. So I hope by now you understand how powerful beliefs and how important your emotional state is for your entire well-being in all aspects of your life. So what are the limiting beliefs that are standing in your way of your true happiness? And how do you reprogram your limiting beliefs into empowering beliefs so that you finally get your breakthroughs and that nothing is standing in your way anymore? Well, there are several ways to do that and I can help you with that. And so if you're interested, then you can book a 45 minute free call with me. Later on in this webinar, there will be a button up here and you can just click it and book a free 45 minute session with me and we can have a chat and we can see how I can possibly help you find your limiting beliefs and how to transform them into empowering beliefs so that things finally start working out for you. So game changer number three, free will. I already mentioned that at the beginning of this webinar, free will consists of three parts. What you focus on, what meaning you give to events 
or experiences in your life and what actions you take or what decisions you make. Now what you focus on, it's a famous saying is where focus goes, energy flows. So where is your focus going and what are you focusing on most of the time? And what thoughts are you focusing on most of the time? Negative thoughts or positive thoughts or, you know, in general, it's important to understand what you're focusing on because you are dragging it into your attention, attention span and it's coming onto your retina and it's being, becoming part of you. And what you're not focusing on, you're missing out on. So it's important to understand what you focus on. And now the second part of free will is the meaning that you give to things. Now, this is an important one because it makes a very big difference. It gives you control over how you actually go through life. So let me explain. If there's an event and, and that event simply happens, right? For instance, let's take my accident. I got hit by a drunk driver and I lost my leg. That's the event that happened. Now, the way I deal with it or the meaning that I give to that event, that I control. So I could have given the meaning to that event. My life is over. I'm not going to find love in my life anymore. And it's, I'm going to be miserable for the rest of my life. That's the meaning I could give to it. But I gave a completely different meaning to it. I said, okay, I see this as an opportunity for growth. I'm going to grow. I'm going to make the best out of it. I'm going to, you know, even live my life fuller than I lived before. And it's a completely, completely different meaning that I'm giving to these well, two completely different meanings that I'm giving to the same event that happened, losing my leg. And so it's my choice what meaning I give to it. Is my life over or do I grab the most of it and make something really beautiful out of my life? And it is with any event that is happening in your life as well, you know, good or bad. It's what meaning you give to it that determines how you deal with it and how you go through life. So I'm going to make a bold statement. Because by saying this, I'm going to say that true happiness or misery is under your control. It's a choice because you have the power how to deal with it and what meaning you give to that situation and to what extent you allow yourself to be affected by it. Think of that one. It's a hard statement, but I, for me, it was a real eye opener when I got to that and I realized it is actually very true. And the third part of free will is taking action or making a decision, which is you know, the action of making a decision. And also doing nothing is the action of doing nothing. So it all comes down to action. <laughs> and if you do nothing, then nothing is going to change in your life. So even if that's an action of doing nothing, nothing will change. And you need to take appropriate action and a lot of massive action if you want things to change. And usually it requires for you to take action that is outside of your comfort zone because that's where change really happens. So it's all about taking action because you can clean yourself up emotionally and everything, but if you want things to change and, and you're just going to be there meditating and trying to manifest it into your reality, it will not happen without taking the appropriate action. So action is always required. Action is the necessary ingredient for change. So. I would say take action right now and start changing and transforming your life today. Now you can book a 45 minute free call with me to see how I can help you with that. But if you don't feel like it, then that's also perfectly okay. But start making changes today. Don't postpone it until tomorrow. Once this webinar finishes, start taking action. If you feel a sense that you want to change or transform or reach your goals or find out where your limiting beliefs are and start taking that action right now. You can do it by having a free call with me or by doing it just on your own. It's your choice. Game changer number four, mastering fear. Fear keeps you stuck and so mastering your fear is crucial in growth and transformation because you need to deal with your fear of getting out of your comfort zone and taking the appropriate action. Otherwise, things will never happen. Inside your comfort zone, it doesn't work. So mastering your fear of doing the things that you are afraid of or feeling insecure about is an important step in your growth and transformation. Fear activates the reptilian brain in the back of your head and it puts you into a freeze, fight or flight mode. So you either freeze and wait until the danger is gone or you start fighting and you know, fight for your life or you make 
sure that you get the hell out of there and start running for your life. But most of our fears today don't just pass. They turn into longer term fears called stress. And so fears or stress keep you in this freeze fight or flight mode. And it keeps you there, well, with less tension, but it keeps you there nonetheless. And it, that process starts to make chemicals in your body that keep your body in a constant state of alert and in a constant state of tension. And it deprives your, your brain functions of the creative center and the center for growth of energy because it is in this constant state of alert. And these other centers of your brain that are the creative centers, they need the relaxed state so that you have the time to have that creative process. So it's actually keeping you from being creative and it keeps you stuck at where you are. So it's important to learn how to go through your fears so that you just, you know, go out there, put yourself out there in your love life, but in your career or anything that you want to reach in your life. You will always feel a certain kind of resistance of fear to be rejected or a failure, whatever it is. But if you go through that fear, it's rewarding because, you know, you just go through it and then often you get beautiful things happening in your life as a reward. So don't let yourself be stuck by fear and understand what the fear is trying to tell you as well because fear is an emotion like any other emotion. It is trying to tell you something. It always conveys a message. So try to understand what the fear is trying to keep you from doing. And maybe there's a limiting belief playing together with the fear. So it all comes together a little bit. You know, limiting beliefs and fears, they all keep you stuck. So understanding your limiting beliefs is equally important as understanding what your fear is trying to tell you. What is your fear trying to protect you from? And is it real? Is it beneficial? And, you know, maybe you can just go through it and just start living life. I also have a, a different uh, webinar where I go into emotional mastery because uh, emotions are a messenger. They always tell you where you are at in your life and the more negative emotions you experience in your life, the more it is actually telling you that you are off track, uh, off track to, to your destiny or your purpose. So listening to your emotions is, is very important and I call that emotional mastery. Become a master of your emotions and you will get a great compass in your life that will lead you straight to your desires and your destiny. Book a free 45 minute call with me and I will share that uh, webinar on emotional mastery with you too as a, as a bonus. Game changer number five, manifesting your reality and the law of attraction, explained. So after you have mastered the previous game changers, then how do you manifest everything into your reality? Well, it's all about aligning yourself with your behavior, with your thoughts and your emotional state with that deeper essence inside of you and with your purpose. Vibrationally align yourself so that you attract it into your reality. That is called the law of attraction. So let me explain the principle of this. You see, everything in our universe has a frequency and a frequency wave or a vibration. So everything vibrates and Everything that we sense with our senses also has a vibration because light waves come to our eyes, but that has a vibration. Sound waves have a vibration, etc. So everything in life has a vibration. So modern quantum physics explains this very well on an atomic and a subatomic level. At that level, everything vibrates and emits energy. So vibration is energy. It's like a radio wave that has a frequency as well. It's vibrating and it carries information over a distance from the radio station to your radio, the song that you're listening to. So if you look at an atom more closely, we will see that it consists of 99% space and just 1% matter. And actually, if we extrapolate that to the universe, it's the same thing. You know, if we take all the mass in the universe and the empty space, the ratio is also 99 to one. So actually, we are just 1% matter. If we would take all the 7 billion humans on our planet and take out all the empty space in the atoms and just stay with the solid matter, we would not be bigger than a sugar cube. Imagine that. So we are practically space. And that space is everywhere because that space is in every atom all over the place. Now the question is, is that space empty or is there something in that space? Now, quantum physics has 
proven that that space is not empty, that it holds energy, and energy is information. So that space is everywhere. So there's a field of that space all around us that connects everything, and that field holds information. So we are living in a field of information. We are connected through our atoms with that space everywhere, which is everywhere, and it holds information. So we are living in a field of information, and it's been called many things. It's been called the quantum field. It's called the divine matrix. It's been called consciousness, and even mystics throughout the years and thousands of years back have talked about this, that there is this field of information with which we communicate and with which we vibrate at a certain level. We are as much part of that field as that field is part of us. Now there's another very interesting concept in quantum physics called entanglement that explains it even more. It says that when two particles have been in close proximity or in physical contact, that they remain connected, and that if something happens in one particle, it instantly has a reaction in the other, the opposite reaction in the other. And it doesn't matter how far away these two particles are. It could be one mile, 10,000 miles, and it could be millions and millions of miles at the other end of the universe. But the reaction is instant. So they communicate through that field of information in an instant manner. Why is this important? Well, because the law of attraction is based on that field, on the theory of that field, which quantum physics has now proven that that field indeed exists. Now, we emit our energy or our emotional state into our environment, into that field of information, in the form of a bioelectromagnetic field. Some call it an aura, but it's a, a magnetic field that we send out. It's our heart, it's our being, and it reaches out over 10 feet outside of our body. Now, what we emit into that field is our emotional state, uh, is our vibration. If we are not feeling too good, then we're sending out a lower vibration than if we are, for instance, in love and we are head over heels, super happy. That's a completely different vibration that we're sending into the field. Now, the field matches the vibration that we are sending out, and it attracts things that are vibrating into our reality that are vibrating at a similar level as we are vibrating. So that is the concept of the law of attraction. What you vibrate out is what you attract into your reality. So let's have a look what our emotions or emotional state, what effect that has on our environment or on ourselves. Now Dr. Emoto from Japan has done some groundbreaking experiments with water and the effect the emotions or intentions have on water. He either send out a loving intention or a negative intention to a cup of water in his lab. He then froze that water as it formed a crystal. He then quickly put it under a microscope and showed the result of the crystallization. And the results were amazing. The positive intentions created beautiful geometrical like crystals, like the ones that you're seeing right now. Whereas the negative intentions created very disharmonious, chaotic, ugly crystals. Now, let me remind you that we are 75% water. So if our intentions have such an effect on water in a cup, it has a similar effect on water in our body. And so by just our thoughts and emotions alone, we have a direct effect on our total physiology, but also what we admit out and what we attract into our lives. And so on a fundamental level, everything is vibration. And as such, emotions are vibrations as well. And so here we have a chart that shows each emotion and its vibration. And it shows that all negative emotions are low-level vibrational emotions, such as shame or guilt or anger. And the higher up we go towards love and compassion, the higher frequency these emotions have. Now, you're admitting that out into the world, you know, that's into the field, that's where you are admitting. So where are you vibrating? If you are constantly uh, in negative thoughts or grumpy, then that is what you admit out and that is what you attract. So be very aware what your emotional state is all the time because that's what you are sending out and you will attract that into your life. That's the, the important part of the law of attraction.
So the higher you learn to vibrate, the more beautiful things you will attract into your life. And that why, that's why emotional mastery is so important. So I hope I made it clear that why it is so important that we vibrationally align ourselves with our purpose and with everything that we do in our lives, with our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. Because if we are aligned with that, then we will attract it into our reality. And so your emotions are your guide. If you feel grumpy or angry or frustrated, it's just a sign that you are not vibrationally aligned properly with your purpose or your goals and your desires. And it's telling you to correct your behavior or correct things in your life so that you're more aligned with it so that you can attract that what is important to you. You know on a deeper level, but sometimes we forget because we think too much with the head. If we learn to listen to our intuition, to our heart, then we can align ourselves vibrationally much easier and attract everything that we want into our reality. Now this may all sound fantastic and easy, and it is fantastic, I can assure you that, but it's not easy, <laughs> it's far from easy, because that alignment is a difficult part. To shed yourself from all that negativity, from that limiting beliefs that you may have, to get a vision, to get a clear vision of where you want to go, to feel that desire, to understand your true desires, to understand your talents, to know really what your talents are and use them optimally, and to just deal with your fears and insecurities and clean it up and clean up all that negativity that you have carrying, been carrying around for a long time or that your environment is constantly throwing onto you. That is a difficult part and that is a process. That is not very easy. So yes, it can all be beautifully done, but that process takes time and I help people in that process because that's exactly what I do. That's my purpose is to help people find their inner strength, their goal, their vision, their desires and help them align themselves with that purpose so that it materializes in their reality. And as such that we all jointly create a better world for humanity. So if you're interested to learn more how, you know, how you can do that, how you can clean yourself up, book a 45 minute call with me. There's a, there's a button right here and you can click it. Maybe it's right here, but you can click it and book a 45 minute call and we can see what I can do for you, what I possibly can do for you to eliminate everything because some things are, as I described, on a much deeper level, subconscious level, and it's difficult to just get there by yourself. So if you want that help, Book that 45 minute free call and we can just have a chat and I can help you right on that call and see where your problems may lie and where your limiting beliefs may be. So let's do a quick recap. In order to take your place in the driver's seat of your own life and take full control into your own hands, it's important to have a direction and a vision on all aspects of your life. To know what you want and desire and then feed that desire with the proper emotional intensity and the appropriate action. The next step is to identify what is standing in your way. Understand your programming and its possible flaws and your limiting beliefs that may be in conflict with your goals and purpose and desire. Your beliefs and your fears are very closely linked and reprogramming your limiting beliefs and conquering your fears is vital to take the proper action that is needed in, in order for you to reach your desires. Because otherwise, your limiting beliefs will keep on sabotaging you and stand in your way of reaching your goals. So don't let any limiting belief kick in just right here. You know, limiting belief like, I will do it tomorrow, I will do it later, I don't have time, I'm too busy, <laughs> or, you know, I know it better, I don't need anybody all kinds of limiting beliefs that will keep you from taking action right now. It's not so much booking that call with me right now as it is taking that action right now to start transforming things in your life. Don't postpone. But if you do book that call with me, I will be sharing uh, a webinar on emotional mastery, which is about different topics. It's about acceptance and self-love and finding love in your life and forgiveness. 
that that's the biggest gift that you can give yourself. And so uh, a lot of life lessons that I will be sharing in that Emotional Mastery uh, webinar because Emotional Mastery is extremely important. Like I said, it is the compass of leading you to a fulfilled life. If you learn to listen well to your emotions, you become a master of your emotions and you take control of your life and you become a master of your own life. So I will be sharing that bonus uh, webinar with you if you book that call. And so it's up to you. It's free will, it's your choice. Do whatever you wanna do, but I tell you, take action. Take action today and start that process of transformation and change. Thank you very much for your attention and hopefully I'll see you soon on that call. Just take your place in the drive.